Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and it's time to take a look at quite possibly the longest delayed Mastermind Creations reformatted release to date. Coming in two separate parts, offered as a bundle deal as well at most retailers, this is Seraphicus Promenon, the Moritaurus Sovereign, and Jewel Identity homaging toy robot that has been in known development for quite a long time. I'm taking a look at the full core and power cradle set, but I'll try to make it clear what comes in which box by the time we're done. The Seraphicus core has got an alien future tech truck form for its alt mode, clearly dipping into the genealogy of the Optimus Prime family tree with its longish nose, two front wheels, and four rear wheels. However, it also looks like a bit of a torpedo battering ram from some kind of Tron church service, from its sloping bullet shape to its various strips of translucent blue plastic. The profile silhouette manages to work well as a standalone vehicle thanks to the natural curvature running from the roof to the rear end, and the colors are delightful. Lots of clashing paint apps and plastic colors break up all the white parts, which I really hope don't end up prone to some kind of yellowing as the years go on. I guess we won't know until those aforementioned years have passed. And technically no toy will survive the heat death of the universe, but... Yo, Seraphicus rolls surprisingly well on all six wheels, partly thanks to how compactly all his underside robot mush has flattened up against the underside of his alt mode. The two swords that come with the core set have not got anywhere to store in this form, unfortunately, outside of haphazardly being jammed into some of the open spaces in the rear half. But don't do this. It's lowbrow. If you got the power cradle as well, then that whole assembly can attach as a trailer via a peg hole connection on the back of Seraphicus's truck roof. This also allows for a natural turning pivot point that kinda works, but also means a single cylindrical peg is holding both parts together. The friction is fine, but it will come undone if you really start winging this guy around. The trailer can also hold the two additional weapons that come in its box, both finding homes on the roof. The stun revolver just pegs onto the front, while the stellar saber slots into a form-fitting sheath. The core set's pair of swords still have nowhere to store, though there are more unintended spaces to just jam them into if you really feel like you have to put them somewhere. I'll be frank, this is a transformation that's much easier in the direction of truck to robot. Robot to truck involves some real finicky arm placement, but even going into robot mode, this design shows a little bit of its age compared to other recent reformatted installments like Spartan. Again, mostly in how the arms work. That said, the feel of the piece is certainly up to spec. In fact, having that modern reformatted solidity is probably how some of the more fragile looking aspects of the transformation are actually surviving the process intact. Seraphicus compresses his mass very satisfyingly in his alt mode, and watching it unfold into a decently tall robot is quite satisfying. There have got to be at least a few of you looking at this and thinking, Hey, that doesn't look like a skinny Nova Prime! That is because the Seraphicus core robot is based on Prima of the original 13, as seen in material like the Covenant of Primus artwork. Seraphicus looks properly regal, properly prime-like, and properly holy. His silhouette has got really cool accents, but I find his biceps and thighs look a little lanky, in a very specific way. They look like another symptom of this being an older reformatted design that went through extremely long development. There's also a little bit of hollowness in his torso between the chest and backpack, though I wonder if it would have been as apparent if so much of the plastic wasn't bright white. The clear blue components shine real well, especially stuff like the forearm greaves with their white and gunmetal paint highlights. Seraphicus also has a metallic teal collar base that bounces a lot of light in an interesting way. And his head sculpt is hardcore! The faceplate has the perfect angles to its edges. Unfortunately, Seraphicus really needed some black paint lining on the inner surfaces of his faceplate and around his eyes. Cutting from gunmetal or metallic teal straight into white plastic washes out a lot of the impact. A flip-down hatch on Seraphicus's chest reveals the Ancient Amber, a silver artifact constructed around a blue crystal core. Which isn't amber. You can pull the thing out if you want him to wave it around and yell about lighting darkest hours, or, like, robot eugenics if he's got all his armor on. Unfortunately, Seraphicus can only fit two fingers into the handles of the Ancient Amber, but it still means he can get a good grip on the thing, albeit an awkward-looking one. The Seraphicus core box only includes a pair of swords for weaponry, which I think will be this ghostly translucent blue if you pick up a copy. The handles are a real chore to get properly situated in the three-quarter peg holes in his palms, as they're kind of rectangular and the slots are kind of circular. As an engineering easter egg, there are some sheath slots in Seraphicus's robot mode backpack. They work, but the swords are so long, they kind of bump into the back of his legs more often than I'd like. 
If you picked up the Power Cradle as well, then you get some new weapon options. The Stun Revolver is such a natural fit for the unarmored robot mode, I'm amazed it wasn't in the core box. It's simple, stylish, and has a free spinning ammo cylinder. It also has a handle that's kinda rectangular, so it sometimes gets tricky about properly seating itself in its owner's grip. The Stellar Saber is simply... I was gonna say Stellar, so I'll just say it's real choice. The silver plays off the translucent blue like a charm, and the matrix-styled hilt adds a lot of character. And the handle is round! It fits so happily in Seraphicus's hands, it also completes his Prima imagery quite well. There's no sheath for it on his robot mode, but hey, you can totally peg his revolver onto his back if you want to be... that guy. Seraphicus Promenade's head is on a ball socket stem, so he can do a lot of this kind of stuff, and then it has a second ball socket connection up into his head, so he can do a whole lot of this kind of stuff, or that kind of stuff, a little bit of that. It's a pretty good neck joint. Just don't spin it around too much, because I found that the ball sits in the socket one way, but not necessarily 180 degrees around the other way. So if it gets super loose, just start spinning it. His shoulders can spin all the way around if you want to be with that kind of person. They can also move outward. And then if you move the shoulder thing up a bit, you can get another degree or two. You can't move the shoulder pad out of the way enough for the full, like, tree posture. It'll always be sticking out about there. But uh, then you can just go here. I don't know. There's also a butterfly joint from the transformation. So even though his arms can't go out like that, they can do a whole lot of other stuff that, to me, somewhat excuses that. There's also a bicep swivel. There is an elbow joint with two hinges but it doesn't really accomplish the full curl. It's, uh, those two inches are more so from the transformation than anything else. The gauntlet part can swivel by itself, and then the wrist is attached via ball socket joint, although uh, it mostly can just swivel around. There's not a lot of other axes of motion. There's just this channel here for it to go there, if you choose. The thumb is on a ball socket joint, which I wish did more than it does. I find it doesn't accomplish a whole lot, despite the extra fields of motion, and then each of his fingers uh, are individually hinged at the knuckle. That's their only joint, and they're all a little bit curved, so you can't necessarily get him to point at stuff all that well, like he can try, but he's always got a little bit of, uh, of sag to his pointer finger. However, this does mean you can have a decent looking, you know, open hand pose with the fingers all sort of tapered down that way. And it makes for a decent looking fist, too, I think. Uh, like a fist with a fist hole in it. His waist can swivel left and right, and that is that, and I'm happy to see that. He's also got hips that ratchet forwards and backwards. Uh, sometimes, when you're moving these hips, they bump around there. Uh, there's, there's no warping on the plastic, but I feel like it's rubbing against the ceiling of the crotch. I don't know if in the long term that'll be a problem. Also, when you try to go for the last click, the leg often moves outwards just a little bit. There's uh, some ratcheted splits going on for fully locked Van Damme posture. And his thighs can fully swivel. His knees have got double-jointed ratchet action. Again, not a full curl, but enough to have just beyond 90 degrees for some of that dynamic tiger knee kind of action. Not a full tiger knee, I guess. More like a, a soft tiger knee. And his uh, ankles can pivot forwards, backwards, and from side to side. Um, although going side to side, the flat surface they create kind of runs into the side of this edge of the boot. It still helps in, in the long run with standing, as the feet are so long that that obstruction does not get in the way of this kind of thing. But uh, it's something to be very aware of. Seraphicus Promenon's core robot is quite poseable and stands on his own pretty well. It just makes me wish he had more packed in accessories aside from those weird ghosty sword things. But I do have that trailer, it does have the pistol and the big fancy sword, and that trailer also does some other stuff. So let's engage with that other stuff.
All right, so the Power Cradle trailer can bust open and transform into a big bad armor rack. It's a visual centerpiece to be sure, and it totally stands solidly once you have it erect and fanned out and locked together. There are a surprising number of small moving parts on here to arrange the various bits and pieces into your preferred Hall of Armor position. Sadly, you have to remove the Stellar Saber from its storage slot when you transform the trailer, and you can't really put it back in more than part of the way without putting the handle and maybe even the blade at a somewhat scary flex risk. Most unfortunate. As is the fact that, well, you have to pull all the armor parts off of the thing in order to attach them to Seraphicus. Given the pageantry of its presentation, I had so hoped to see some kind of integration into the actual assembly process. Even something as simple as Seraphicus stepping into the boots as the vest clamped down around his torso. Ah oh well. On the bright side, everything pops onto his body with the ease of a mainline Transformers piece. There's a fun and toyetic feel to the process that was a very pleasant surprise for me. I was so used to high-end armor ups being careful kid gloves affairs that it took me one and a half sessions of playing Nova Prime dress up to realize that I didn't have to worry about a bunch of the parts falling off as I went along. With an unofficial but essential touch of raising the collar section, which you may find easier to do before closing up the torso armor, Seraphicus Promenon stands in all his winged glory. Here is the Nova Prime content. Seraphicus is now all bulked out, horn helmeted, and wing packaged to resemble the IDW comics villain a whole lot. The silhouette is a little puff chested, but totally hits a lot of the main points. The colors are a bit of a different story though. While everything is topical, the overall look is a lot darker than Nova Prime's usual appearances, yet the color palette does not really suit a Nemesis Prime homage either. His chest and shoulders particularly contribute to this, and I wonder if things would look a lot different with even just the shoulder pads redone in white plastic. And I also wonder if I constantly misremember just how dark his chest really is. The paintwork is lovely, especially on the chest, as the palette has grown to include a whole lot more blue and orange. The feather blades of the wing pack are done in a heat-inducing translucent orange plastic with bold dark blue paint detailing to break up the look. The helmet looks a little odd, mostly because it's a legitimate helmet and not a super robot head upgrade. I don't disagree that I'd have liked to see an entire new set of optics and maybe even a new face altogether, but that's a part of the entire theme of the set whether you like it or not. It's not a straight up Nova Prime, it's a take on Prima who armors up into a take on Nova Prime. The hands are, on the whole, much better at holding all of the included weapons than the core robots. Unfortunately, while storing the ghost blue swords in the backpack is possible, it entirely clashes with a lot of the fresh leg bulk and I don't recommend doing it. On the front of the new chest piece, there is a panel that can fold up. It looks like it makes room to open Seraphicus's core chest and reveal the ancient amber, except that inner panel is now blocked in a couple of spots. You can pull the armor open, open the chest, reclose the armor, then raise its outer center panel. You can. I don't know if you should, but you can. The core body's joints are basically the joints of this dude, but he's got all his armor now, so things here and there maybe work a little different. The head's the same. It's on the, uh, the two ball joint connection, well, the double barbell ball socket connection. Uh, and it works fine, especially when you have it lifted up here, because uh, if you don't lift up the collar, especially, the head can end up looking a bit sunken within all this armor. So get it up there looking all tall and proud with its weird giant forehead. The uh, arms work more or less the same. The armor is uh, perhaps a little bit more in the way, so you're losing, a, uh, what, maybe like 15 degrees outwards motion. Uh, and the butterfly joint doesn't do as much here. This chunk also helps move the bicep swivel a bit easier now that it's not quite as thin as before. And the elbow joint still works. I suppose the double jointedness of it is nullified somewhat, though it wasn't able to get a super tight curl in the first place. Uh, this joint still works. You notice I flip the hand around. This makes it less obvious that there's another hand inside the glove. I just wait, I like the way that looks better. Some people might prefer seeing the little hand in there. I don't know. Uh, the larger new hand works more or less the same way. It's not on a ball socket joint, it's just on a straight swivel now, but otherwise it's got the four finger joints and the ball socketed thumb. So you can get a little bit of this, uh, hey, eugenics are A-OK, -okay, says Nova Prime. He's a bad guy. His waist joint still works. And it's great with this huge wing backpack seeing like all this stuff moving in tandem. Uh, well, I mean, his torso being a chunk on a swivel joint. The new skirt pieces are able to get out of the way super easy so that the hips can still do their thing. They can't go the full Van Damme now because they've got 
this thing that that's bumping in uh, into the hip up top the knee joints still work the same uh, they're still double jointed and still not able to get quite a super deep curl but this is a pretty good like past 90 degree curl for something with a boot this big uh, so I, I think this joint survives super well through this and bulkening be aware though it's super easy to knock these things off because the way you pull them off is by grabbing the protruding bit and applying pressure that way uh, this kneecap joint might do the same thing while you're working the thigh swivel, so be aware of what's going on. The ankles have lost something here. They, they can still tilt forward and back. They can still tilt a little bit side to side, but the forward and back tilt, I find, has lost some of its, uh, its chutzpah uh, that it had before. Like, this guy can't quite assume uh, the S-curved hard return stance as well as he could before. Uh, there's also this wiggly bit to get out of the way if you are trying to set something up with the legs angled back. So his, his overall body posability is fine, but the big new thing are the wings. So I'll just do a mathematical rundown on these. There is a swivel joint here on this turbine, then there's a swivel joint here on this connective piece of tissue, there's a hinge there to fold the wings back on that axis on that connector, which you might cover up and thus make the back folding not as effective. This turbine up here is another hinge that lets this piece of wing fold out and then inside that piece of wing are them feathers now they are keyed so that as you saw when i open it up uh they open up all like that and look okay except i don't like it when wings have this much space between feathers i'm a weirdo i prefer the feathers to be slightly layered and look more like a single mass so i would have preferred it if like the keying was oriented more towards something like this rather than something like that but that's just my taste, I suppose. Uh, if you're a huge stickler for symmetry and need something like this, then you're gonna be, you know, adjusting these for a while. But if you aren't, if you're cool with whatever, the wings are pretty good. You know, you can get some flappage. I also really like that if you store them and just collapse everything, they hang down in a real nice cloak-like fashion. So, uh, I I'm digging the wings. Uh, they... Could have used, I think, more feathers. That would have been what I would have liked to see, so that I could get them flaring out and pulling down and filling all of this up with translucent orange feathery bladedness. But that also would have meant, like, these things would have to be thicker. They're already pretty thick. Maybe I'm just fixated on huge swathes of translucent orange. I don't know. But Seraphicus Promenon, his posability in his armored up form, it's fine it's about as good as your typical armored up high-end third party-ish robot toy tends to get a few joints get limitations here and there but for the most part the numbers are not severely castrated by all the additional bulk looking at the core set on its own seraphicus is a fun alien truck robot but man it is a huge shame that both of his best weapons are bundled with the trailer he really needed the stun revolver at least to be part of the smaller box as far as construction quality, Seraphicus is up to reformatted par, but certainly feels like an older Mastermind Creations design. There's an overall fiddlier, hearts of steel tactile sensation to the piece, and I suspect its long development was greatly focused on making sure every layer of the play pattern was up to current muster. If you just want a Prima figure, it's worth considering the core set on its own, but man, I hope you have got some accessories waiting for him to handle. As for the full power cradled experience, it is very toyetically sound. The trailer and armor gimmicks all work as they should and I've got to give big kudos for how solid it all feels. But I've got to restate the major caveat of the piece as well. This isn't a dedicated Nova Prime lookalike and may well stray too far for those who want a representation of that character above all else. This is a more experimental idea, representing one character when unarmored and another when fully geared up. I think it turned out pretty well, especially on the back of MMC's in-house fiction, but bear all of that in mind before you lay out the cash for a purchase. The final armored robot is hefty in hand, plenty playable, and imposing to behold. I just wonder how he'd look if he had a full new head rather than a helmet over the base of the core's portrait. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and I hope this video has helped you consider what to do about the Moritoris Sovereign. It's very much reminded me that I need to make a video for Hypernovae at some point. Gotta build up topical content for those Nova Prime end bump cards.